So it's Wednesday morning and we've got to get the video out for tomorrow. Yay! So this is fairly much real time. Um, it's not really the nicest of days out. So that just makes it a bit more annoying that the secondary heating solution has had to be switched on. Because our Ebersmacker won't start. Again! So I've taken the Ebersmacker apart and this is the glow plug and the atomizer screen. The atomizer screen in particular, as you can see, is very badly coked up at some parts. The glow plug is still nice and straight. Generally speaking, when these glow plugs have had enough, the tip begins to go round off or begins to swell out and get quite large. And that's usually a sign that these have had enough and need replacing. So this one here should, in theory, be all right but the inside of the combustion chamber is horribly coked up and it's going to have to go in for cleaning there's no two ways about it <sighs> so it's off to the service center for the upper smacker dampness into the mattress in the uh, beaver we've ordered up this product here which is called dry mat and what it basically is it's a plastic sponge and you can see that it um, has like a layer and this allows air to circulate under the mattress I'm putting it down in the beaver once I get it cleared and uh, hopefully that will reduce the condensation and solve any moisture problems under the mattress <laughs> So I'm in the V berth and what I've got is a marker pin, a sharp knife, some cutters, a pair of scissors and a box full of cable ties. And although the boat has got insulation and padding, there's little bare bits like this which is bare hull and this is what moisture forms on and then runs into the bed space and wets the underside of the mattress and the underside of the sheet. This will provide the separator needed to keep the mattress and the sheet off the base and this moisture will then be able to travel through this and vent through some small holes here and that will dry the bed out. My basic problem is that my V-berth is triangular and this is rectangular so it will have to be cut to fit. So this is it roughly laid out. The plan is to cut off some of these triangles here and then put them up at the front and then attach, attach them with the cable ties. So this is the space under the V-berth at the front and that is open and quite a draft came through it. So what I did with that was I got some floorboard and cut it to the exact shape and then I made a little upright on the far side also out of floorboard which I screwed to it. Then I just pushed the whole thing forward and covered it with the insulation. So it's not actually held in by anything other than pressure, it's just exactly sized to fit and then just pushed in. 
This is a piece of leftover wood that I have from the little barrier I made to go on top of the water tank in the V berth. And um, it's not a particularly brilliant wood, but I'm sure it'll be fine. It's not particularly damp or wet in there. Um, I marked the sides of the boat, the angle of the sides of the boat, and then this bit here was chopped off. And similar on that side, and that was chopped off. And then I got a, another piece of wood and basically put it on like that and it's been screwed down into this and then this surface here has all the reflective foil on it you see and the whole thing was then just pushed back until the side of the boat came up to this edge here and similarly on the other side and it just makes a snug fit so the side of the boat that was here has been done with the um, special insulation and similarly over there and then this edge along here has all been done with the same special insulation and that's what I've used just to block the uh, airflow coming through the top of that area. And whilst it's not exactly brilliant we do pack this space out with other things like bosun's chairs and um, fen fender cloths and things like that and um, boom tents so we just try to use those as another layer of insulation in here but I am thinking of adding more insulation to the underside of this and to the underside of this piece of wood here and then that'll just cut down on damp and cold that's travelling up. Also these these bed boards could do with a bit of insulation under them. To be honest they could do with re-varnishing. This is the original varnish that was put on by Bavaria and I think 15 years of wear and tear it's about time they were redone. I am supposed to be going up to Manchester to collect the Aberspacker this morning but really I'm just waiting for the rain to stop so I don't get absolutely drenched going from here to the car. So we're going to do some insulation instead. So it's Wednesday morning and we've got to get the video out for tomorrow. Yay! So this is fairly much real time. Um, this, is, this is where we are and this is our new roll of insulation. Following from last week uh, video one of our um, commenters um, said there was a, a different insulation. Um, we bought this one from Kiravans, uh, and that is 8mm closed cell foam. But she found um, a different insulation, which is 10mm closed cell foam. Uh, but this time it's from Van Diemen. Yes, and uh, there's a little quiz question there. It's, uh... Uh, this is from Van Diemen, so it must be from an Australian company. And if you can tell me why that is, then there could be a prize in it if you're the first one to do so. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, 10 mil closed cell foam, and what we're going to do with that is uh, finish off the spots which we didn't do. Uh, but the nice thing about uh, having spots which we didn't do, we'll be able to show you the difference between. Um, where we have got insulation and where we haven't. Okay so what we are, this is under the bunk where we've, we've insulated this bit but we haven't insulated that bit. We've run out. We ran out. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rub that, a couple of rubs, like so, and I'm going to set it aside. And this, this is a clean tissue I've taken and I'm going to just rub this. And you can see, yeah. And you can already see the difference. Yeah. Alright, put the, put the thing down. So, that's the difference it has made. Yeah. So that's where the insulation. That that's where the insulation, insulation was, was, and that's where so there the was insulation no insulation. Wasn't. Yeah. And those sections are under the water line. These sections here that are above the water line aren't as bad. No, they're not. They've still got a little bit of dampness, but but nothing like nothing like, nothing like under the but water it's line. Water under the water line, you can really see the difference. Yeah. Because Bev is. Uh, using the Stanley blade which is the correct tool for cutting this stuff. We find one in the horse box. Yeah, call it. that's basically the old tools that were left by the previous owner. Um, but yeah, don't use, don't use uh, kitchen knives. Use a good standard Stanley knife yeah. to cut this um, insulation. Okay, so we've cut this piece to size to fill a little gap in the corner. And what Gaynor's going to do is she's just going to peel off part of the backing. Because when this stuff sticks, it is actually quite sticky. Uh, we find out the hard way. <laughs> right, so I've just peeled it back. 
so that I can put this right up into the corner there, up in there. I'm going to push it. Oopsie daisy. Get that seam in yet. Right in there. And then work all the air bubbles out from behind it. Yep. Now you'll notice she didn't pull all the backing paper off. The reason for that is as she sticks it down she will reach behind it and pull off the backing paper. So I'm just pulling a bit more down. Because if you pull it all off, this will stick to absolutely everything around here. Is that a cable under behind there? Yeah, it's the speaker cable. Oh well. The speaker cable is now embedded into the... Oh, at least some worries. So I'm just pulling the ins of back and tape right down. Getting it all out. Let's get the seam laid in if you can. That's it. And the good thing about this um, insulation is when we go to warmer climates, it will actually keep us uh, nice and cool as well. Centre has said is that it's almost certainly time to run the red diesel. Um, they say that the ones they get in for the most regular services are the ones that run on red diesel. Uh, they've got truck ones and things like that, some of which run on white diesel, some of which run on red diesel, and the red diesel ones are in every three to six months. The white diesel ones, much less frequently, a year to year and a half typically. So they say that the gumming up we're experiencing is probably almost certainly due to the lower combustion temperatures you get with red diesel. I had thought there was no difference between them, but yeah. So now I've got to get it fitted back and get it going again and then we'll decide whether we're going to start filling our tanks with white diesel. It is more expensive, but the money you spend, you spend getting the Uber's back your service, so what's the point? Mm -hmm. 